It is the reigning world and Olympic champion, Victor Axelsson, the defending champion, looking to reach a record-breaking sixth final at the end of year championship. He's up against Kodai Naruoka of Japan. After this men's singles, we'll have the mixed doubles featuring the two-time defending champions, the home pair of Puavar Nukro and Teura Tanachai. Well, we know that the beaten finalist from three years ago, Anthony Sinisuka Ginting, awaits the winner of this match. And this, a repeat of the group match earlier in the week. Victor Axelsson, who topped the group despite losing to Pranoy yesterday against the Japanese youngster, 21-year-old Kodai Naroka. HSBC BWF World Tour Finals 2022 Semi Finals. Court one, men's single semi-finals. Victor Selsen from Denmark. The defending champion, the three-time champion of the end of year championships, Victor Axelsen of Denmark. Well, a chance for the tall Dane to make history today. No player has reached six finals in one discipline at the end of year championship since the inception of the Super Series finals. The first was back in 2008. And of course, the Super Series has been preceded by the World Tour. Versus Kodai Naraoka from Japan. In his first ever end of year championships, Kodai Naraoka, who has burst onto the world stage this year and really made his presence felt. Three HSBC BWF World Tour finals, the Korean Masters 300. The Singapore 500 event and the Chinese Taipei 300. Add to that another qualifying event, not part of the HSBC BWF World Tour, uh, but a, a World Tour event at 100 level. He won the Vietnam Open. Well, the former world number one, Kento Momota, faded from the world stage this year in Japan have another world-class men's singles player for the Japanese fans to follow. Well, this will be a third meeting between these two players. Okay. Last Good. time uh, was on Thursday, we got a toss two days the black ago. And red. Five and 15 in 33 minutes red for him. when they met red. in the group stage. So the toss of the coin. You want the toss? And Kodai Naraoka wins the toss of the coin and chooses ends. And he's chosen the better end to start, which I think will suit Axelson perfectly well. He usually likes to start the bad end. Here in Bangkok with his family, his wife and two daughters, came a, a father for a second time in October. So Aya, his second daughter, very young indeed. World number one and number one for a third consecutive year on the race to the World Tour Finals. 104th week in total in his third spell as world number one. Seven titles this year, including five World Tour titles, both of the Super 1000 events and the Malaysian Open and French Open as well. 
Well, those are his matches. No problem in the first match against Hu Guangzhou, then uh, Naraoka, and then lost yesterday to Pranoy. He'd been a game and 10 6 up uh, before Pranoy came back to win. Uh, by that stage, Victor Axelson knew he was going to top the group anyway, by the virtue of the fact that he had won the opening game. So, whether subconsciously it meant that much to him, I don't know. Are these the wonderful trophies that the players are playing for, will be playing for tomorrow? Gold and silver for the winner. Silver for the runner-up. Kodai Naraoka, he's 21 years of age. Incidentally, as you saw, Axelson, 28, but will turn 29 next month in January. Naraoka from Omori, North Honshu. And 173 translates into 5 foot 8. He's playing off his career high of 14. It's his third week in total. And finished the year ranked five on the race to these World Tour finals. Ready to play? Beat Pranoy in three games in his first match, then lost to Axelson, as we've already mentioned. And then yesterday in a straight playoff to see who would join Axelson in the semi final stage, he beat Lu Guangzhou in two straight games. Long uh, game uh, match for two games, though, 58 minutes. Find that out from. India is our umpire for this one, and Fabio Beto from Italy is the service judge. Well, a change of kit for Victor Axelson today. He's played all week in black kit, choosing the all white today. Ready? Ladies and gentlemen, on the right, Victor Axelsen, Denmark. And on the left, Kodai Naruka, Japan. Victor Axelson to solve love on play. So the defending champion and three-time winner of the end of year championship, Victor Axelson looking for a record-breaking sixth final at this particular event. And a sixth World Tour tournament final of the year. Gone wrong. When Axelson went into his One last group long. match yesterday, he was on a win loss record for the year of 49 and 2. Obviously, now on 49 and 3. And uh, while he was playing against Pranoy, I was sitting commentating with Steen Peterson. And we were discussing whether, you know, he's been pretty much invincible all year, oh. Victor Axelson. And losing to Pranoy not whether it will necessarily dent Axelson's confidence, but whether it will give other players the belief Don't that Axelson can be beaten. Only time will tell. played on Thursday. Victor Axelson won the opening game to five. And I only caught glimpses of the match out of the corner of my eye, but it seemed to me that Naraoka just couldn't deal with the steepness of the attack from Axelson. Oh, my goodness, and he's got it back! 
or Axelson with wheel spin. So one, three. Oh, I hope he hasn't hurt his ribs. Just yes, watch his his feet go away from him, and still manage to get it back and get up. What you call commitment to the cause. That's the sort Four, of error three. that Axelson was making yesterday against Pernoy. And as I've mentioned, I know in the past, confidence in sport is extremely oh. fragile. Just wide. So five straight points to Nararoka. One, three. Slip again from Maxelson. Well, here, in his first two matches here, Maxelson was just oozing confidence, had an aura of invincibility about him. But I think the bubble of confidence may have been burst. Burst by Pranoy yesterday. Well, on the first day of the competition, it was virtually impossible for players from this near side of the court to clear long of the back line, so the drift isn't nearly as bad as it was on day one, which is a jolly good thing. The changing conditions makes it very difficult for the players to adjust from day to day. Oh, 
That's delightful. What a super backhand. Well, obviously, such a tall man. We know that Axelson's attacking play is superb. But his defensive play, he's worked on his agility. He's worked on his defence. I think defensively, he's now got one of the best defences in the men's singles game. Well, there's a challenge here from Naro Walker. I think he might win that. That's all that landed in. I think the line judge was influenced by Axelson about to challenge himself. Here we go. No. Line judge was right. Challenge unsuccessful. One challenge remaining. Eight all. Play. Yeah. There is still that drift. It's still fast playing towards the near side Nine, of the court eight. as we look down during the rallies. So in other words, for Axelson, he's got to be very careful with his lifts and pushes. Oh, but he controlled that beautifully. He really did. Lovely return of serve. So to the mid-game interval, on a run of three straight points, Victor Axelson. But he's certainly not having it all his own way at the moment. Far from it. Five of the last six points to Axelson. Oh, my word. That's a very, very good attacking shot from Axelson.
Ukrainians. Rally, but at the start of the rally, Victor Axelson's defence rock solid. Waited for the right opportunity before he went for his winner. Twist and turn. Forehand, side, then backhand. Naraoka being forced to move from one side of the court to the other. And he's quick. Naraoka is one of these quick new players that has great speed about the court. Challenge that, yeah. I thought that may have been wide. So Axelson has handed the shuttle back. Oh, so he's not challenging then. I thought he was challenging. Was that? Look how much work Narrow Orca is doing. Axelson. I don't think it was pushed to the back of the court once in that rally. Back of the court, then brought forward, then pushed to the back again. Oh, it was pushed long, but Naraoka having to do an awful lot of work in that rally. Longest rally so far. 13 all. backhand defence where he just guides the shuttle across court. Well, he's played it for an outright winner at least twice already in this opening game. Good return of serve. Sometimes Axelson can get a little tentative on his low serve when players start attacking it like that. Oh, touch the net. 
Oh, my goodness. Naraoka. The shot. 16, 15. No, 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 no. No. You hit the net? No. Look. Look, he... Naraoka is disappointed because he knows he's faulted. The umpire hasn't called it. Says it's OK. He says that the shuttle touched the net on Axelson's Please. side before Naraoka touched the net. I'm not sure I agree with that. I wouldn't mind seeing that again at some point, if the opportunity arises. Well, even Naraoka, his look of disappointment, he knew it was a fault. Axelson knew it was a fault. That's a great return. Now he's slipped again, Axelson. And I can tell the man is seething inside. Extravagant to do the full pirouette on the backhand there from Axelson. Yeah, just out of shot there. Axelson almost slams his racket, stops himself. 18 from B. straight points oh, that's a beauty that is terrific from Naraoka 19 15 just seems to sort of almost chop underneath the shuttle to guide it cross court. It's five straight points now, and two points away from the opening game. Oh, my goodness, what the earth happened there? Completely mistimed it. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19, he thinks the sideways drift might have brought that back in. It was a lot closer, I have to say, than I had initially thought it was going to be. Here we go. No. The call line judge, so narrow has got no challenges left. No challenges remaining. 17, 17 19, play. Missed it. One point in it. 18, 19. It's two game point opportunities for Kodai Naraoka. So, total training, game point 18. 
It's so desperately difficult to control those lifts. Game point has come and gone. Back level, it's 20 all. 20 all. Extra points required until there's a clear two point winning margin. Third time lucky. Third game point opportunity for the Japanese youngster. So, so on, 21, 20. Just telling off the coach for imparting information when he should have been getting ready to serve. coming back there was a wonderfully steep cross-court shot from Axelson here it comes and look at the dive and gets up all in one motion that is remarkable so 21 all three game points have come and gone now as far as the Japanese player is concerned inside the back line it's a fourth game point opportunity now for Naraoka Defence again from Axelson. It's going wide. Opening game to Kodai Naraoka on his fourth game point opportunity. 23 21. Opening game, an absolute thriller. 27 minutes in total.
Well, celebrating as if he's won the match. But I think my theory, with Axelsson losing to Pranoy yesterday, that other players will believe that they too can beat Axelsson. I'm liking that theory more and more. 23, 21, 27 minutes. Well, this is a test of character for Victor Axelson. has to deal with the hitting with the drift and the inability to keep the shuttle in if he pushes to the back. Not inability, but difficulty in keeping the shuttle in, I should say. Pushed it wide. Wonder if Axelson is returning to that incident in the opening game when Naraoka hit the net. Oh. Now Axelson's oh. shot oh. wasn't going over. And if the shuttle had started to fall his side of the court, then it's OK for Naraoka to hit, have hit the net. That's why I wanted to see it again. I couldn't really tell properly. But the reaction of Naraoka was that he felt he'd played a fault. fan this is worrying times oh. now that's a great response from the game
Yeah, that's the issue. That's what I was alluding to. This is a good spell for Axelsson. Ever since I said if you were a Danish fan, you'd be concerned. Axelsson has responded ever since then quite brilliantly. All credit to him. Challenge. But that had been five straight points to Axelson. Perhaps that's helped settle the nerves. He, he does look a little bit fidgety to me. He's changed his racket a couple of times, picked up a new racket when the strings aren't broken, just trying to feel, find the one that feels right with the right grip. from Narrow Orca. The contrast to two days ago when these two played in the group. Well, it's difficult to explain other than what I've already said, which is, you know, the fact that Axelson has lost his confidence, has been battered, and he's lost yesterday to Pernoy, Maraoka. Seeing Pernoy beat Victor Axelsson will have now had belief that Axelsson is beatable. Whereas before, I think uh, too many players sort of felt they were playing against Axelsson and, you know, there was a belief that he couldn't be beaten. What a difference there is today. On a run of seven straight points, 
an 11-6 lead for Kodai Naroka, having already won the opening game. First things first, as far as Axelson is concerned, he's got to stop this run of points. Yeah. Oh. Naroka challenging that. I don't think he'll win that challenge. I'll be surprised if he does. sure whether he tripped or whether his ankle went. Well, we didn't see the incident in question. Here we go. No, we're not seeing it there either. It was earlier. He either tripped or his ankle went. and getting very, very frustrated that he keeps losing his footing. He keeps slipping on the court. Shake of the head. There's the slip again. Left leg. himself on Thank you. Well, that's one of the rare occasions we've seen that shot from him today we usually see that multiple times by midway through the second game Taken. Well, great champions find a way to win when they're not playing their best.
has gone long, he's back level. Seven of the last nine points to Axelson. Good on parring, not allowing Naraoka to waste time. Threaded it down the line. That's a super shot from Narrow Walker. Yeah, I've seen Narrow Walker on numerous occasions stretch the uh, interpretation of play must be continuous to the absolute cusp of legality. Oh dear. That's a loose serve. Fault called on Victor Axelson by Fabio Veto. Very, very rare that Axelson ever gets faulted for too high on his serve. It's gone wide. Well, which player can hold their nerve? Pushed it wide. That is sheer nerves. Yeah, good umpiring. Narooka to play on.
Well, the tension in this match is just... Well, you could cut it with a knife, couldn't you? the bottom of the net from Naraoka. Axelson oh. says the shuttle's fine. Naraoka wanted it changed. 17 all. Very tired. And he's won the rally. Well, he's been double at the kit box. Quite clearly the longest rally of the match so far, 50 shots. Again from Axis, a two point advantage and two points away from the place in the final. Kodai Naraoka, who would have thought when Axelson beat him two days ago in 33 minutes? Struggling physically is Naraoka. Can he hang on? This is a tired, tired looking shot. This one. All. biding his time. Hmm. 
move in Kodai Naraoka from back to front, pushed him to the back again. And on a run of three straight points now, Victor Axelsson, an opportunity to send this to a third and deciding game. suggesting that Axelsson had taken the shuttle before he crossed over the net. Forty-five shot rally. Game point, Axelsson. One game all. 21-19 on a run of four straight points. What was it I was saying? Great champions find a way to win when they're not playing their best. How on earth did Axelsson dig himself out of trouble there? 54 minutes into the match and it's one game all. And I worry about the stamina now of Kodai Naraoka. He looked desperately tired towards the end of that second game. And just look at the reaction from Axelsson. releasing the tension, I think, as much as anything with that reaction. Well, I said that I thought the Kodo Naraoka was looking very tired towards the end of that second game. Interesting in that two-minute timeout, Victor Axelsson doing a lot of stretching. He too must be feeling the pace. Three minutes until we hit the hour mark. Love we haven't even started the deciding game. Here Play. we go, though. Long rallies are going to hurt Naraoka. Oh, that's a beauty. What a good shot. You know, the strange thing is, I've hardly seen Axelsson attack in this match at all. See winning smash after winning smash from the tall dane. It's hardly been any. The 
with no shot. That's a beautiful net shot from Narooka. Real cut underneath the shuttle. That's what's been lacking so far. Three, two. Those sort of winning smashes. Wasn't the best of lifts, I have to say, from Narrow Orca. It really is an excellent net play from Narooka. Creates huge tumble on his net shots. They're really chopping underneath the shuttle. Landed in. Always challenging. Seven, Hasn't got a challenge right all day, Narooka. His first challenge of this deciding game. Turn, gets the net cord. No, I'm saying don't deliberately fall down. Thank you. I don't think that was deliberate. Just trying to get back the net cord. 
completely lost his balance. Indecision from Axelson in his deep forehand corner, but a magnificent backhand early on in that rally from Narooka. This is the. I think he could have left that, you know. So, Six, eight. Yeah, too late making the decision to play it. Challenge from Narrow Oka, he knows it was long. Great rally, good pace, that's gone long. shot from Narooka. Another tired looking shot. 11-7 the advantage to the three-time former champion, Victor Axelsson. Looking to make history today, Axelsson. They're reaching a sixth final, no player in any discipline. He's contested six finals. Hvor du, hvor du sætter ham dernede, han sætter foden på den værste del af banen, så han ikke springer ud i den, okay? Ja. Og stadigvæk... Og så Mellem spiller med, ligesom jeg har haft det på gangen her. Og hvis du overskud... Træn på lidt, træn på lidt, træn på lidt. 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 Træn på lidt. Axelson hold his nerve. Okay. 
Oh, the umpire's going to have a word. They're not allowed to test the shuttle. Well. Here we go. Well, that's three errors in the last three rallies, two before the change of ends. With Naraoka. It looks to me as if psychologically he doesn't believe. He's somehow got to get that belief back. Well, I know that Axelson wants to work his opponent and keep moving him around the court, but I would at some stage like to see Axelson be a little more proactive in his attacking play. Challenging, but I don't think he'll win that challenge. Yeah, the line judge was correct. I didn't think he would win that. One challenge remaining. Psychological games. Axelson wouldn't change the shuttle when Naraoka asked him to do so. Now Naraoka is refusing when Axelson asks. what we've been seeing all year, rallies like that from Axelson. Axelson's gone tentative again. Yeah. Is that a sign of the nerves? Uh, 
that's a good return of serve. Now Oka asking to go and towel down. Umpire saying no. That's what umpire should say. Play is supposed to be continuous. Stamina is supposed to be part of the test of the sport. is to me a, a definite so sign of nerves. You just start hoping the shuttle will be out rather than Victor. really believing it. That's a good lift. Immediately apologises for the net cord, Axelson. Well, the doctor's been called. He's got a graze on his elbow or something. But if he's tired, it's a, an opportune moment to have a bit of a recovery time. Well, that was hardly treatment, was it? Hour and 15 minutes this match has been in progress. Skill from Axelson. They are clearly inside the line. <laughs> Two points away from creating history. No player has reached six end-of-year championship finals in the same discipline. Axelson currently on five. <laughs> Match point opportunities. Seven of them for the three-time former champion. Nice. 
defiance is not done yet. Naroka. Second match point opportunity for Axelson. Good flick serve. Good flick serve. Well, I've been saying that it's a chance for Victor Axelson to make history. Of course, I ought to mention that Tai Su Ying is through to a record sixth final of the end of year championships already in the women's singles. So Axelson could equal that. match points have come and gone. Four match points have come and gone, and another three remain. All about the nerves. Match point number five. Brilliantly saved. This time, Victor Axelson as he sinks to the floor. An hour and 22 minutes. Both players down, but only one is out. Kodai Naraoka pushing the defending champion and the reigning world and Olympic champion to the brink. But the world number one had the character to fight back when he wasn't playing his best. He's come through this marathon match and like Tai Su Ying, tomorrow will contest a sixth 
end of year championship final. 21 18 in the deciding game. Match time rounded up to an hour and 23 minutes. This the final rally. On his sixth match point opportunity. Relief as much as elation for Victor Axelson. Crippling disappointment for Kodai Naraoka. But it takes two players to make a great match like that. And it's been hugely entertaining. Confirmation of the scoreline. 21-23, 21-19, 21-18 in the deciding game in a match lasting an hour and 23 minutes. Brilliant, wonderful badminton. And we've got one more semi-final to come. And it is the two-time defending champions, Puavarunukro and Teirat Tanachai, against the young Indonesians, Rivaldi and Mentari. What a day it's been inside this stadium here in Bangkok. My goodness me. And we've still got one more semi-final to come at the HSBC BWF World Tour Finals. What a fantastic day of badminton. Our last semi-final uh, features the two-time defending champions in the mixed doubles, the home pair of Puavaranukro and Teirat Tanachai up against the former 